What's good, YouTube? Pierre Stevens here, screenwriter, stand-up comic, actor, Beatles fan, former Disneyland cast member, black nerd. Yeah. It's Oscar season. In this video, we're finally going to figure out how to fix the Academy Awards. I love the Oscars. I love film. And so, we're finally going to figure out how to fix the Oscars. Because it's, it's been struggling a little bit as of late. But with these simple steps, we're going to take care of that. Step number one. Nominate better best picture movies. And nominate 10, not 7, not 8, not 9. Nominate 10 Best Picture Movies. You have 10 slots. Why not nominate 10 movies? It would find the appeal for people that love those movies. And you would get them to watch. You have 10 spots. Why not just nominate 10 movies? And one of those movies should be a blockbuster. Or one of those movies, one of those slots should be in the top 10 highest grossing films of the year. I'm sure you could find a really good film out of the top 10 highest grossing films of that year within that bunch. And the nine other slots, they can be your art house films, they can be whatever. But just imagine if that one film, that highest grossing film, just imagine if that's like Star Wars, for example. Let's say the next Star Wars, and hopefully it is, the next Star Wars that comes out in December, let's say that's actually a really good film. Let's say J.J. Abrams... He does a great job on a lot of films. Let's say he does a really good job on his film. And so, it, what if that gets nominated for Best Picture? Do you know how big the ratings would be for the following Oscars in 2020? They'd be huge. Star Wars has the biggest fan base of any movie. And if you nominate that film for Best Picture, those Star Wars fans, and there are many, they're going to watch. So why wouldn't you want to do that? Also, if you nominate 10 slots, and, and one of those slots would be for a high-grossing film. Films like Wonder Woman, films like Mission Impossible that came out this year in, in, in 2018. Those films won't get snubbed. And those were some really, really good films that should have got recognized. But because Oscars don't really like those kind of big blockbuster films, which, which are really good films, they get pushed to the side. And that explains the ratings drop. So... Nominate 10 films, 10. You got 10 slots, nominate 10 films. Nominate better, best picture films that are still good films. Nominate 10 of them. You got 10 slots. Step number two. The Oscars needs a few more new categories. I think the Academy had their heart in the right place when they wanted to come up with the best blockbuster Oscar. But that got so much heat that, that they shut it down and they got rid of it. And they should have got rid of it because it was, a, it was a bad idea. It was a terrible idea. They should have done this instead. Instead of a best blockbuster Oscar, no. Here's what you do. You create two new awards for best comedy film and best horror film. You create two new categories for those two things. Because comedy films, even good comedy films, and especially good horror films, get just, throughout the Oscars hi history, they just get snubbed every year. With the exception of Get Out and a few others, horror in particular just gets snubbed. And there's so many, so many hardcore horror fans and ho horror filmmakers that if the Academy paid more attention to those really good horror films that get snubbed, like Hereditary and A Quiet Place. Like, if they paid more attention to those films, like, ratings would just sh shoot through the roof because there's so many horror films. I mean, there's so many horror fans of horror films. Like, I saw A Quiet Place, which was one of the best films of 2018, hands down. But as soon as I, as soon as I got done watching it, I was like, man, this is a really, really, really good film. But I know it's not going to get any love at the Oscars. Maybe it'll get one nomination, and it, it, it did get a nomination but for some of the lesser awards, but I knew it was going to get no recognition at all or, or no inclination at all for Best Picture. I, I knew it. And that is a Best Picture quality film. It is, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion. So come up with the Best Horror Film uh, category and come up with a Best Comedy Film category. 
and ratings would go through the roof. And those are some really good, legitimate ideas and awards. Step number three to fix the Oscars, the third idea, time. Time is an issue, but, but the Oscars doesn't really have a time issue. It has an entertainment issue. Like the late, great Roger Ebert, who I had the opportunity to volunteer at a film festival and an opportunity to meet, he always used to say, no great film is too long and no bad film is too short. So, I mean, if the Oscars is awesome and entertaining and they're nominated movies that you like and movies that are good movies that you care about, then if it runs over three hours, three hours, 15 minutes, maybe even three hours and 30 minutes, it's still a little long. But if it's entertaining and they're nominating great movies that you like, then you'll watch it. And you won't have that much of an issue with time. But if they're nominating crappy movies, movies no one's ever seen, and, and the show's running for three and a half hours, then that's where the problem lies. But here are a few steps, a few steps to fix the time issue. Step A, move the start time of the show earlier to 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Move the show up an hour. Start the show at 6 p.m. Central Time. It would make so much more sense. Like, for example, like, if, if you keep it at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm from Chicago... So, I live in Chicago, so I say Central Time. But if you keep it at the same time it's at, the show can end around 11 Eastern. Which is, people are going to bed that time. People have to work in the morning. So they're going to bed, they're getting tired, they're losing interest, and you're losing viewers. But, if you do what the Super Bowl does, the Super Bowl starts at 5.30pm Central Time, like here in Chicago, which is 6.30 Eastern Time in New York. The Super Bowl... It lasts for about three and a half hours. It, it ends around 10 o'clock. And that's great. People are not going to bed yet. They don't complain about the time of the Super Bowl. And that lasts longer than the Oscars. But the Super Bowl's smart. They start the Super Bowl an hour and a half before they start the Oscars. So if it runs long, as long as it doesn't get into bedtime, then people won't mind. You won't lose viewers. So it's a simple fix. Just move the Oscars from an 8 Eastern start time to a 7 p.m. Eastern start time. Simple fix. Step B, limit the number of musical performances to two a show. That's it. You don't need to do five or however many they do. I don't know how many they do, but it's too many. Just do two a show. Just choose your two best buzzworthy, catchy awesome songs from movies that year and perform those two perform it at the third way mark like 33 percent into the show and perform the second and final song like 66 percent like two-thirds into the show uh, i love lynn mel miranda but i don't agree with him this isn't the grammys this is the oscars you don't need to perform every song that's been nominated for best original song it's just it there's no need for that just pick the two most awesome songs, and that's it. That would save so much time. Step C, you get 90 seconds to do your Oscar-winning speech. That's it. At the beginning of the show, they should tell all the nominees, yo, you guys, you get 90 seconds. I don't care if it's five producers that go on stage for Best Picture and they all want to say something. I don't care. Those five they all better speak within 90 seconds. We're not going to give 30 seconds to each or a minute to each producer. No. 90 seconds total. After 90 seconds, we cut your mic off. Your mic gets cut off. We play the music too, but we cut your mic off so no one can hear. And that's it. Step D to save time or to reduce time. Utilize the pre-show. We should give out a few awards, just a few during the pre-show, that hour show before the Oscars starts on ABC, why not utilize that show? Like, for instance, Best Original Song should be nominated during the pre-show. It doesn't really need to be nominated. I mean, it doesn't need to be awarded during the main show. And Best Short Film and Best Animated Film, those would be, I mean, Best Short Animated Film. 
Let me, let me make sure I get this correct. Best short animated film and best short film should be awarded during the pre-show. Anything in the shorts category, they aren't feature films. The Oscars should be, the main show should focus solely on feature films. That should be his focus. So if you move those two awards to the pre-show, it would save so much time. And it would still be, it would still be cool. You could give them out on the red carpet. Uh, they would get so much more attention. It would be, it would be a really good idea and a great time saver. Also, uh, best costume design and uh, best hair and makeup. Why not give those awards out during the scientific and technical awards Oscar ceremony that takes place a few weeks uh, before the Oscars do? That would be, it would make so much more sense. All you would have to do is acknowledge those winners of best costume design and best hair and makeup. Acknowledge those winners briefly during the actual ceremony. So they'll still get their shine. They'll still get the glow. You know, they'll still get that recognition. And that's that's all you have to do. Simple. Step E. Do not, under any circumstance, do not move the Oscars to the first week of February. That's way too early. Keep the Oscars... At the last week of February or the first Sunday in March. Keep it there. Because if you move it too early, people, most people don't even see most of the best picture movies. Most of the movies nominated for, for these Oscars. But if you keep it later, if you have the Oscars later, people will get a chance to see some of these movies that are nominated for best picture. They'll create an emotional bond for these movies and in turn, it would garner more interest. And once you garner more interest, you garner more viewers. But if you move it early, like in next year, they're going to have the Oscars the first Sunday, the second Sunday in February or whatever. That's too early, man. Step four, your big names, your big stars, they need to be there. Your Brad Pitt, your George Clooney's, your Will Smith, your Denzel Washington's, your Meryl Streep's, they need to be there. So find some way. I don't care if you got to bribe them. I don't care if you say, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll fund your movie, Touchstone Pictures, uh, if, if Walt Disney Pictures or whatever, if you guys show up. But find some way to get your big stars there at the Oscars. Because if your Tom Hanks's, your Tom Cruise, if they're there, it makes the Oscars feel so much more buzzworthy, so much more can't miss. And not only that, like advertise that in market that these stars are going to be presenting and they're going to be present. Step number five, there should be mandatory screenings for all best picture movies or for all these movies. Like you have to see all these best picture movies in order to vote for best picture. Like you have to attend the mandatory screenings. Our voters have to see these films in order to know which ones like are the best, which is very subjective anyway. But you have to see all the films. They're mandatory. Period. Our final step, step number six, get rid of preferential ballot voting. Whatever best picture film gets the most votes, that is our best picture winner. It. That's it. Period. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Let me know your comments down below. Peace and love, guys. And one more thing. Uh, I am an aspiring screenwriter. I've got scripts for sitcoms and screenplays ready to go, ready to be shot. Um, we just need support from you guys. So help me reach my dreams. Help me use film to impact the world and lift the world up. So peace and love, guys. Follow me on Instagram at Pierre underscore Devon, D-E-V-O-N, and help me impact the world through film. Peace and love, guys.